Amen. Wow. Father, thank you again for Baba, Santa tena kwa neno lako. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Santa kwa Roho Mtakatifu, the teacher, mwalimu. And Father, I ask say do na, what you want to do for me. Na wewe nakuomba ufanye kwa tutakufanya. To inspire each and every leader here. Kwa inua viongozi wale wako mbali hapa. Jesus name. Kwa jina la Yesu. Amen. Amen. Ambassadors. Viongozi au au balozi. Ministry gifts are ambassadors. Na karama za kutumishi ni ni, ni mabalozi. Apostles, mitume, prophets, manabii, evangelists, evangelists, pastors, wachungaji, teachers, walimu. Thank God for the five ministry gifts. Tumshukuru kwa ajili ya huduma tano. And thank God for the ministry of helps. Na tumshukuru Mungu kwa ajili ya huduma masaidiano. I want you to go with me. Tangu uende pamoja na mimi to 1 Corinthians. Kwa Wakorintho wa kwanza the 12th chapter mlango wa 12 and I want you to look at something take one galia kitu pale in verse let me see where we want to go in verse 27 27 27 27 It says, Inasema, "Now you are the body of Christ." Christo, and members in particular. Na viungo kila mmoja peke yake. And God. Na Mungu. Everybody say God. Kila mmoja aseme Mungu. Mungu. We're talking about the kingdom right now. Tuzungumzie ufalme sasa hivi. And in the first session I told you the difference between family and kingdom. Na kwenye session ya kwanza nikwambia tofauti kati ya familia na ufalme. In the kingdom, there's different rank in the body of Christ. Kuna ngazi tofauti katika mwili wa Kristo. And along with that rank is responsibility. Na pia kuna majukumu katika hizo ngazi. Now you are the body of Christ. Na wewe ni mwili wa Kristo. And members in particular. Na 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 pia ni mshiriki katika So each one of us are a particular member in the body of Christ. And God has set. So God is the one that appoints the ambassadors. And he is the one that appoints each and every calling. One of the things that the scriptures say that we're to pray about it is that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened that we would know the hope of our calling. The Bible also says that the gifts and callings of God na na mwito wa Mungu are without repentance. Haina majuto. That means that whatever God has called us to do, na kichoto Mungu anachotaka kufanya, he doesn't change his mind. Abalishi mawazo yake. So he has a plan, a purpose for everyone. Ana mpango, ana kusudi kwa yeye kila mmoja. And he won't change his mind. Na hizo balisha mawazo yake. If I was on the tractor today at the farm, kama ningekuwa sasa hivi niko kwenye tractor kwa shamba. I would not be in the will of God. Nisingo kwenye mapenzi ya Mungu. And God won't change his mind about that. Na Mungu asinge balisha mpango wake kuhusiana na hilo. And I know that I know I'm doing what God told me to do. Na najua sasa nafanya kile ambacho Mungu ameniambia nifanye. So when I'm going forward as his ambassador, I know that the entire kingdom of God is behind me to do that. Na napokwenda kufanya hivyo kama 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 balozi najua kwamba mbingu iko kinyume changu iko pamoja na mimi kufanya hivyo. But if I was out on that tractor, the kingdom of God would not be behind me doing what I'm doing. Na ningekuwa kwenye tractor That's how important it is that you find and fulfill your calling. When you look at the importance of obedience, And you know an ambassador that's representing a president or a king of another nation he has to obey. Na ule ule balozi anayemwakilisha mfalme au anayemwakilisha rais lazima atii. And do what 
the king or president tells him to do. He is the president king's voice and actions in that country. You understand? And when Jesus was here, he had to do what his father told him to do. And think about what would have happened if Jesus would not have obeyed. We would be lost. We would be forever lost. The, the entire human race, all the way from Adam up until now, would be lost. Now, Only Jesus could do what he what he was called to do. Yes, And he's the only one who was called to come and give his life on the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Only G Jesus yes, could do that. As and the Bible says that we are members in particular. You're the only one that can do what God called you to do. When I first started preaching, there was a minister that I got a lot of inspiration from. In fact, my life totally changed through that minister. It's a very large minister. And that minister even prophesied over my life. And confirm what I'm doing today. And so when I started preaching and teaching, I would preach just like him. I, my voice was like him. If you hear some of my old preachings, it sounds like that person and not me. Oh, such pressure. Oh. And then, I, I heard this come up. Stop trying to be like him. You're not called to be him. He's called to be him. And you're called to be you. And you got to give it the way I want you to give it, with your personality. There's no singer that can sing like Bishop Charles. Yeah. No one. No, Apuna. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there's no one that can sing like you. Na Apuna by the people come away. There's no pastor that's going to be exactly like you. So we are particular people even though we can have the same calling. And that's what makes the body of Christ so unique. You understand? You're not a copy. You're an original. Yes. You're an original. original. But there, there, I had such pressure that if I'm going to make it in ministry, this is who I got to be like. But then later on, I found out as Jesus is, so are we yes. in this world. Yes. And so I just need to learn to let him live himself through me with my personality. Amen. Amen. Don't try to be like somebody else. You are a particular member in the body of Christ. Sing the way God wants you to sing. Pastor the way God wants you to pastor. You can have five churches in one city and each one will have a little bit different uh, vision. 
The general guidelines will all be the same. That's to bring people to Jesus. Teach, preach the word. Help them to grow in the Lord. Help them to find their places. But there'll be something about each vision that'll be a little bit different than the other church. And every pastor has to get it from God for themselves. Like Lord, what have you called me to do? Like and then God brings all these people together that that body can fulfill that vision, that purpose in that area in the world. Now I want you to see something. It says And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, gifts of healings. So you've got apostles. You got prophets. You got teachers. Woohoo! Great, right? And how many of you would agree with me that these are supernatural gifts? Amen. Amen. And then miracles. Amen. Gifts of healings. Well, that also has to do with the evangelistic ministry when it comes to fivefold. And yes, every believer is called to lay hands on the sick and get the sick healed. But there are also fivefold ministry. Now, look at this. Miracles, Mujiza. healings, Upoyaji. wonders, Ma Mujiza. apostles, Me -me -me. prophets, Yahoo! Yahoo! Oh, okay. <laughs> Helps. Uh, mm. Mm. You mean yeah, people that build church buildings? What on Ojenga Kanisa? You mean? Sound people? You mean people that set up the stage for the crusade? You mean clean the bathroom? You mean people that cook the meals? Somebody got somebody cooking right now. <laughs> and according to the Bible, that is just as supernatural. So my point is, every part here is important. Yes. And that we all work together, we all get the same reward. And, we, and, and our body is strong, our church is strong. The singers, they're going to get the same reward as the preacher in the crusade. Hallelujah. They helped to prepare the whole thing, the atmosphere. The one that runs the sound. The one that set the, the stage up. What would, it, what would the preaching be without a stage? What would the preaching be with somebody that didn't know how to run the sound? That is a disaster. What would it be in a church? If nobody cleaned the bathroom. Mm. What would do you understand how these things are important? All this stuff comes together. Amen. 
It's not the preachers or the big guys and the people in uh, in helps or the little guys. Aimanishi kama kwa mhubiri yeye alikuwa ni mtu mkubwa na wale wanaofanya huduma ya kumsaidiana wanakuwa ni watu wadogo. No, it's that we all have different callings. Ni hapana wote tuna huduma tofauti. But yet every calling is important. Na kila huduma ni muhimu. And it's simply that we have different ranks. Na ni kweli kuna 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 ngazi tofauti. But with our ranks come greater responsibilities. Kadi ambapo ngazi inapokuwa kubwa ndivyo ambapo majukumu yanakuwa makubwa zaidi. And this is why every preacher sometime in their life should have started by cleaning the toilet or doing something like that. Ndio maana kila mhubiri au mchungaji anapoanza anaanza kwanza kusafisha choo <laughs> that has to do with identifying with the people. Yeah. You understand? It's not that we don't and won't do it. But it's as we grow, we don't have the time to do it. But everybody in your church, if they're called even to the fivefold ministry, they need to be tested. Because when you get up to that place as a ministry gift, people and they'll do it and, and it's okay. But they'll oh the preacher. But if the preacher gets into pride, like it becomes his downfall. But when he's come up through the ranks, he says, Yep. Yeah, I know what it's like to clean the toilet. My profession is not only farming. Sio tu kulima but I'm also a welder. Lakini pia ni mtu anachomea. I know how to build this thing. Najua jinsi ya kutengeneza hii jengo. I been out there, I've done it. Nimekuwa pale nimeshafanya. And I could go out there and talk with those guys. Na nimeona pale nikaongea na wale wazeka na kuchomelea magari. Yeah, welding. Yeah. Kuchomelea machuma. Eh. Don't forget to identify with your people no matter how big you get. We don't want to be those politicians that have never worked a job. We don't want to be those leaders like a politician, a government leader that's never worked a job. What the job? Okay, ni kama wana siasa mavano labo wabunge hawaelewi mambo ya nendea kwa watu wakini wako kule juu. My point is everybody in our church is important. And we value every single person. As ambassadors. The ambassador loves his people. The ambassador loves his nation. Bishop Charles was telling me when I was in the ambassador's home. The ambassador constantly had the television on. And was listening to the news from his nation. And even though he was list, he was in Belgium. He kept his nation. And he knew how to function out of his nation. We are not of this world. Which brings us back to our opening scripture. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5. Are you learning something today? When Paul writes this, you can really see that he is writing recognizing his position as an ambassador. In 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 20, it says, Now then, we, everybody say we, 
Tu. Don't forget that. Você sabe? We. Sissi, tu. It's always a we. Ni sissi. So, we, we. Sissi. Sio, so binafsi. Hapa, tafsi yake ni tofauti. I watch out about those ministers that get up with the I. Na, ngalega wale wa ubiru wa sema mimi. Or you need to watch out about the people in your churches that get up with the I. Na, mtu ambaye anasimana kusema mimi. This is a we. Ni sissi. Yes. Sissi. We. Sissi. That means we. I need you, you need me. I need God. I need the one that gave me the orders to be an ambassador. So even as I stand here, I stand here as a we. It's me. The Holy Spirit in me, under Jesus, God the Father, that's a we, it's we, because I'm working with Bishop, and I want to help him, that I can help him to help you to become what God called you to be. So we are working together. And I have a whole church and group of people back in Germany and in other nations that are praying about these meetings. And they have even supported us coming to this nation to do what we're doing. That's a we. Yes. Do you understand that? Remember as an ambassador, you can't do what God has called you to do without the people. Amen. You need people. If you're going to have a local church, you got to have people. Come on, that one at Kanisa Manapo. You want to have people working with you as a we. When I tell you what, what the fuck has now come as this? Can you see that? So even though you're an ambassador, you still have a we. You got people with you. You have God with you. It's not only Bishop Charles, but it's Bishop Charles and his wife. He's strong because he got a strong woman. Hallelujah. <laughs> Behind every great man of God is a great woman of God. And they're either going with the man of God. And thank God for women that are going with the man of God. But at the same time, the man of God is recognizing there's something in my woman too. Yeah. And their kids. Now to two out. And they're all working together as a we. Now when I find that kind of come out, wow, sissy. Can you see this? Yes. It's a we. You need your people. You need your people. Everyone is important. All of them in their places is important. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he says, we, Sisi, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ. What does that mean? That means that when you speak, you are there to speak in the place of Jesus. Wow. Wow. You are taking his place in front of the people. Christ. 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 So when the people hear you, it's like Jesus was standing right there in front of them listening and the people are listening to him. Can you see how important it is to find out what he wants to say? Wow. Wow. 
Now then we are ambassadors of Christ. So Paul was saying, hey, Jesus is standing here in front of you. And he says, as though God did beseech you by by us, we pray that in Christ's stead, that means taking Christ's place right here in front of the people, or we are standing here as an ambassador representing him, representing the kingdom of God, we pray you be reconciled or re-establish your relationship with God. Now, Sasa, this is where we're going to get to you. Paul, Paolo, as an ambassador, brought the heart of the revelation for the church. Many times, churches build on Old Testament information. Many times ministers know the Old Testament and the Old Testament stories better than they do the New. Look what Paul says. In verse 14, he says, For the love of Christ, so an ambassador has the love of Christ to love the people. For the love of Christ constrains us because we thus judge that if one died for all, verse 14, then we're all dead. You understand that as an ambassador, Paul saw things different. As an ambassador, you're going to see things different. You're going to have a sight in you that God wants you to get into your people. Paul had all of this revelation. And he knew that his main commission was to get the revelation that God gave him into this earth. In the Old Testament, the people were not born again. They did not have the Spirit of God in them. We've learned everybody got a call. Everybody has a calling. Everybody has a purpose. Everybody is a particular member of the body of Christ. Everybody, the, the word says the callings and gifts of God or the gifts and callings are without repentance. So these callings are important. But how are people going to find their callings? How are they going to find out their purpose? How are they going to live this kingdom of God in this wicked earth. You understand? This is the ambassador's position. The ambassador's position is to help the people to understand their kingdom. To help them to understand who they are. And to help people to have the sight 
na kuwasaidia watu kuwa na naweza kuona to not see things in this world the way the world sees it wasione vitu vya ulimwengu kama jinsi ambao ulimwengu unavyoona but to begin lakini waanze to learn kujifunza and they come to the point that they fully live na waje kwenye nafasi ambapo watakuja kuishi in this world katika huu ulimwengu from the inside out kutoka ndani kuja nje Do you understand? If you can teach your church how to live not by their senses but by the man on the inside your church will be completely different than the system that's in this world. Well, pastor, what am I supposed to do with my life? And you're teaching them. Hey, you're a new creation in Christ. Hey, Paul was called to be an apostle from his mother's womb. Hey, the word says we have this treasure inside us in earthen vessels. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will show us things to come. He's in us. You understand God created man to live from the spirit out. This is why it is so powerful. Not only that we become sons and daughters of God. Not only that we are born again and going to heaven. But we literally are in this world but have the kingdom of God inside. Wow. Wow. So what happens is when people learn to be led and live by the inside all that God has planned for them will be revealed hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. so what happens Amen. many times churches focus on all the old testament teaching but have very little revelation of New Testament. I remember one time God said turn the binoculars around. Have you ever looked at a pair of binoculars the wrong direction? You look and everything is very small. This is the way a lot of churches are. They got the binoculars turned around. They know all the stuff about the Old Testament. But they know very little of the teaching that comes from the New. And I'm not talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Even though it says New Testament. Jesus ministered under the Old Testament. Do you understand? The people were not born again. They were not born again until after Jesus went to the cross and raised from the dead. This is a reason there were many times that Jesus used terms. He's the first one to use the term church. What is a church? He he uh he said this is the way you pray. And and he gave the Lord's Prayer. And the Lord's Prayer is actually a prayer of the Old Testament going out and the New Testament coming in. Jesus was the first one 
Yes, he is the term agape love. When he used the word for love, it was a totally different word that they were used to. Jesus used this word in Mark 4 mystery. Everybody say mystery. Mystery. Jesus, yes, in his life, was the revelation of the New Testament. But he couldn't give it to the people. Why? Because they weren't born again. They did not have the Spirit of God in them. So they could not live out of the Spirit. You understand? And this is the reason Jesus so many times used stories and examples and parables and all these things because man was un in the realm of sense knowledge. This is the reason in the Old Testament you have all the different things that the people had to do. These were sense knowledge things to teach the people in their senses about things that would come. And God's in, in the temple in the Old Testament, there was a place called the Holiest of Holies. And that's where the Spirit of God was. But you know what? In the New Testament, when you're born again, you become the temple of the Holy Spirit. God lives in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Greater is He. Come again. Greater is He. That is in you than he that is in the world. So the world's got someone, something in it, and you got something in you. And what is in you is greater than the one that's in this world. And so what? needs to happen is God in us is there to live himself from the inside out through us. Oh, somebody shout in this So if all you do is teach your people Old Testament, Old Testament, every Daniel and David and the lion's den and Joshua and Caleb and all these things, if that's your only focus, your people are going to be weak. I'm not saying not to teach them that. But if that's your focus, and you know very little about who the people have become in Christ, they will never come into New Testament living. They will stay in the place that they continue to live by their senses. Do you understand that? And so if you're going to grow and become strong, we have to get into this New Testament epistle stuff. And this is what Paul says. He says, and that he died for all, verse 15, so Paul's recognizing that if somebody died for other people about Jesus then that means the people were dead or they were separated from God and so Jesus when he was on the cross he identified with man in his fallen condition do you remember that when Jesus was on the earth he always called God Father Father, Father, Father Baba. 49 times in the New Testament in the, in the Gospels you see Jesus calling God Father 
zaidi ya mara na nane Mungu Yesu amuita baba yake baba Mungu baba But nobody else was called him father Hakuna mtu mwingine aliyemuita baba Why Wali because they had a sin nature in them they could not be the children of God Walikuwa na asili ya dhambi na ni mwao hawakuweza kuwa watoto wa Mungu They can only have Old Testament covenant with God through Old Testament means Kwa hiyo walikuwa wanaweza kuhusiana na Mungu katika hali ya agano la kale But Jesus didn't just have Old Testament covenant Jesus had a relationship with God as his father Hallelujah Hallelujah And he shows you and I what it means to have that kind of relationship Na He's not just God Yes In the Old Testament they only knew him as God 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 Katika agano la kale walikuwa mjua Mungu 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 We know him we trust Jua as father Kama baba You understand there's a difference. Well, the fault. There's a difference between being a servant. Well, the fault is that I'm to mission. Well, I'm a servant. Come on to mission. But yet Paul writes in Galatians, we're not servants. Paul and Andrea the Galatians is so a tumor. He says we're no longer servants. That's Old Testament. This is so a tumor. Then I hear that they're all like We are sons and daughters. This is you and our mungu. And as sons and daughters, we serve. Na kama wana mungu tu tumika. In the Old Testament, they were servants. That serve, but in the New Testament, we are sons and daughters that serve. Hallelujah. You understand? In the Old Testament, they had this mentality. Well, I'm just a servant. I'm just, I'm just a servant. I'm a servant of God. But in the New Testament, like at the Gospel of Jesus, well, I'm just a servant. I'm a servant. Jesus walked around as a son. Yes, I put the bed. I said, "I'm to mission. I'm to my. I tell me, I'm a man." And this is why you must have New Testament revelation. Your church people are sons and daughters, not servants. Na zima ujua katika galodip ya kwamba wakosh wa Kristo katika galisalapo si watumu wa bali ni watoto wa Mungu. In the Old Testament, they were still sinners. With the sin nature, they, they tried to do things right, but they still have the sin nature in them that separated them from a holy God. This is why when the people died in the Old Testament, they went to that place called Abraham's bosom. They couldn't go straight to heaven. But when Jesus died, He went to hell as a sinner for our sin. And on the way out, the word said he stopped off at Abraham's bosom. David prophesied it. And Peter mentions it in the sermon he preached on the day of Pentecost. And Jesus went to that place called Abraham's bosom. That is spoke of in Luke 16. And all those Old Testament saints they got born again. And they're in heaven today. But you understand in the Old Testament they were servants doing their best with their senses but in the New Testament we got a better covenant with better promises. Hallelujah. So Paul said hey, hey If he died, come on, Kufa, the Son of God, Jesus, yes, then that means that we were dead, and we all were dead with the sin nature. But Jesus took that sin nature on the cross. He paid for the sin. He went to hell, and he was resurrected, and we're no longer sinners. This is so when you die, be dead. Hallelujah. Old Testament keeps people sinners. New Testament makes people the righteousness of God in Christ. You can never have confidence in your life as a believer 
of God if you think that you're still a sinner. Aweze kuwa na ujasiri kwa Mungu kama una mawazo kufikia kama ni mwenye dhambi. Because the devil always come along and tell you about some sin and that's why you can't get it. Na na shetani sasa anakuja na kukuambia kwamba wewe una dhambi fulani na huwezi kutoka hapo. He always work on that unworthy feeling. I'm so unworthy. But when you realize, hey, hey, and that's what the 21st verse says here. You are the righteousness. 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 Your people realize they are the righteousness. Righteousness. They have the ability to stand before God without a sense of guilt or inferiority as if they had never sinned before. I'm not talking about the body. I'm not talking about the soul. But I'm talking about where you have completely changed, and that is your spirit. And when a person is born again, all the sin is taken out of their spirit. Every bad thing that was there is completely removed. There is no sin. There is no hate. There is no depression. There's no bad thing on the inside of a son, a daughter of God. In the spirit, they are perfect. And so by teaching the revelation of the New Testament, who they are in Christ, it activates their spirit. Put all of this power on the inside of them. God in them begins to come inside out. And through righteousness, they have the power to resist sin. But if they think they're a sinner, they never have the power to resist. And then they're so miserable. Because always on the inside is this nature that is holy and pure. But that is holy and pure. But in their unrenewed mind, I'm so unworthy. I'm so unworthy. And and what happens? Their Christian life is energized with flesh. When God wants to energize it with spirit. Oh, somebody say something in this place today. And this is what Paul is saying here. He says in verse 16, Wherefore henceforth now we know man after the flesh. We don't want to see our people only on the outside. This is not the way we want to get to know the people. But we want to recognize what God has done on the inside. If they're born again, God lives in them. God is there to change their life. And as an ambassador, it's your responsibility to bring forth the word of God into their hearts that will activate who they are in Christ. So every time you stand in that pulpit, Jesus is telling you to tell them who they are in him this is the kingdom the kingdom of God is in you Christ in you that's New Testament revelation Christ in you the hope of glory Paul said I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me in all the problems that he faced he knew Christ was in him to strengthen him 
kumtia nguvu to empower him kumtia nguvu the word says in romans 8 as many as are led by the spirit of god wale wote wanaongozwa na roho ya mungu they are Wow, the sons. And the Greek says, they are the mature sons. They are the mature sons. So mature believers are believers that learn to live from their spirit. Oh, God knows the yes. Mungu anajua ndio. And the yes will be in there. Na ndio itakuwa ndani mwao. God knows the no. Mungu anajua hapana. And the no will be there. Na ile no itakuwa ndani mwao. Help us in all of our decision making. Atatusaidia katika maamuzi yetu yote. Remember what Paul said he said it seemed good to me and the Holy Ghost. Ah Paul alisema ilionekana vyema kwangu na kwa Roho Mtakatifu. Bore witness on the inside. Ambaye Roho Mtakatifu anatoa ushuhuda ndani mwake. So Paul is saying Paul anasema, we don't know you after the flesh. We're not looking at your outside life. We're looking at a way to activate you from the inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When righteousness is revealed, When people get the revelation of righteousness they'll stop sinning. Watu wakipata ufunuo wa haki wataacha kutenda dhambi. Amen. Do you understand? Unaelewa? But when we only talk about sin, tutongea tu kwa habari ya dhambi. And we don't talk about righteousness. Na tutongea habari ya haki. They don't ever know where the source is to stop the sin. Hawatajua sasa waacheje kutenda dhambi. But when they realize I'm not a sinner with a sin nature anymore but I am the righteousness of God in Christ and in me is the power to resist this thing that wants to keep a hold in my life. Hallelujah. Can you see this? This is what Paul said. We don't know man after the flesh yet we have known Christ and we were with Jesus. We saw him, we touched him, we handled him. Yet now henceforth know we him no more. Verse 16. Yeah, hata mtu yote kwa ya mwili, ingawa sisi tumemtambua Kristo kwa jinsi ya mwili. Lakini sasa hivi tena. Verse 17. Hata imekuwa mtu akiwa ndani ya Kristo amekuwa tumbo kipya yakana mpita. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore. Hata imekuwa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore. Hata imekuwa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If any man be Ka- in Christ. Mtu yote akiwa ndani ya Kristo, he's a new creation. Ni mtu mpya. Amen. Ni kiumbe kipya. Ni mpya. He's not a sinner trying to get new. He's new. Yeye yeah, ni mtu mpya. And we want to bring this new that he is out. There are more beautiful on the inside than they are on the outside. Kuna mambo mazuri ndani kuliko nje. And so many times people focus on the outside when God said focus on the inside and bring it out. Na watu wengi sana wanaangalia nje baada ya kuangalia ndani kuleta nje. Do you understand this? Unaelewa hivi? And through revelation of the word you can bring that out. Na kupitia ufunuo wa neno unaweza kuleta hiyo ikatoka nje. But if all you do is Old Testament teaching you're not going to bring it out. Kama utaendelea kufundisha tu kwa la kale hautaweza kukuleta hiyo kitu ikatoka. But when you understand the revelation of the New Testament and who God has made us in Christ. Ukielewa ufunuo wa galo jipya Mungu ametufanya nini kati ya Kristo? Then you can go back to the Old Testament. Then up the God deep the Kale and say wow. So wow. There's so many types and shadows and God was preparing people for what would come. Kuoga ni ishara nyingi na mifano mingi ambao Mungu alikuwa anaandaa katika Agano Jipya. They had the temple in the Old Testament the, the only one that could go into the holy of holies was the priest. Walikuwa wana ikalo na mtu alikuwa anaenda kwenye holy patipatifu alikuwa ni kwa mkuu peke yake. But in the New Testament we are priests. Sisi ni 
ni mapwani. We are kings. Sisi ni wafami. And what was in the Old Testament in that tent is in every believer. Hallelujah. Amen. Kila mtu kwa katika lile hema katika galo la kale ipo ndani ya kila muamini. Hallelujah. What happens to a local church? We're out of their belly. And Jesus talked about it. He said there would be a well of water on the inside of man that man would be able to draw from. It's called the well of eternal life. Hallelujah. And then Jesus said that out of our belly, the inside out would flow rivers of living water. Oh, somebody say something can you see this as an ambassador it's your responsibility to show them the kingdom to teach them the kingdom to teach them their rights and their privileges in Christ to teach them what Jesus called the revelation of the mystery and Paul mentions it several times in the book of Ephesians the mystery Christ in us we are the temple of the Holy Spirit as many as are led by the Spirit of God they are the sons of God we have this treasure in earthen vessels the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost we can love, we're lovers we are the righteousness of God in Christ Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Where's the heavenly place for the believer? It was the holiest of holies in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, it's in us. The blessing is in us. Hallelujah. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Where's the glory? It's in us. If the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies. There's healing inside. Jesus said the kingdom of God will be in you. He's in us. The kingdom is there. The ministry gives from the inside. We have the same spirit of faith. God's faith is in us. And on and on we are complete in Christ. That's what an ambassador does. That's what we're called to do. Is bring this man from the inside out. Hallelujah. 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 That's what an ambassador does. That's the responsibility of every church. So many churches, you're a sinner. So many churches. So many churches preach to the people sin, sin, sin. And yes, we need to say what sin is. But we need to tell the people who they are. And when they, we tell them who they are, then from the inside out, they have power to come clean. To come clean in their lives. We don't want to just walk around being afraid. But we want to walk around like Jesus. Jesus walked around in communication all the time and confidence with his Father. Hallelujah. 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 And Jesus, he showed us. 
When you look at the Gospels, Injili, you can see what it looks like to have that kind of relationship with God as your Father. And this is why it was so different for him in the way he lived in the earth compared to the way the people were living. Because he knew that he was functioning from a different kingdom. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you so much for every ambassador. If you are in the ministry today, as a pastor, as a ministry gift, in the ministry of helps, I want you to stand up right now. And I want to pray for you. Yeah. You're a singer. You work with sound. You clean the toilets. It's all important. All important. Well, I think we covered everybody. Yeah, even the cook. Even the cook. Yeah, they're coming. <laughs> everybody. And that's what I was looking. I was looking to see if everybody would stand. Everybody here is important. Working together is important. Unity is important. And don't forget this. Whether other people see what you do or not, and sometimes we don't. Even as, as as pastors, we don't always see what everybody does. And the bigger the ministry is, the more that happens. But you want to grow. No church is to be selfish. Every church is to keep growing. Because God's got a whole lot of people in this area that need what you have. And all of you that are pastors, God's got a whole lot of people in the area where you pastor. They need what your church has to give. And so don't ever come to this point that you just want to you know, grow to a certain level and then, and then settle down. That's not love. Love wants everybody to have what changed our lives. You understand that? I've heard people say that before to me. Say, well, you know, as long as we just want to stay a little church. Because after all, when we're a little church, things are comfortable. We got enough money to pay the pastor. We got enough money to do, or enough people to do our little thing. Come again. We have enough people to do, you know, what needs to be done okay. in the church. That's selfish. What will be nasty? That's selfish. What will be nasty? Love wants to get out. Uh, and give away. This life. To other people that changed our life and to help them find their place. And so every church is to keep growing and growing. But as you grow, it may be 